going down today so guess what guess what guess what turn it all turn it all turn it all the way off now yeah 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 <laughs> oh my goodness a lot more um normal way that i enter the show this week um as opposed to last week when yesterday i mean well when last week doing the show you know me and uh, my Springer family had a had a left cross right to the gut and an uppercut right to the soul. But um, I'm going to get in that in a minute. But uh, I hope everybody's doing awesome. Please allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Brandon Bravon Towns, and this is Sports Plus Life, that dare sports podcast where we talk about all of the necessary things in sports and all of the necessary things in life as well. And I hope everybody's been doing good. I've only got um, today and tomorrow left on my quote unquote vacation. Honestly, my vacation is technically over. These are just my regular days off now. I'm, I'm usually off Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. It is Monday, okay? August the 16th, 2000 of the 2-1, and um, it's a cloudy day, as this week is supposed to be ugly weather-wise, and that sucks because I'd rather have the ugly weather week while I was off, but um, it is what it is. I hope everybody is doing well, and um, I'll go ahead and start right off with, of course, you know, last week, like I said, uh, my Springer family was dealt a heavy blow as we lost one of our uh, friends and brothers and uh, 2001 classmates, Chris Meekins, unexpectedly, and it hurt. We were grieving last week, um, and you know we're a lot. We're still grieving because you know it still just seems kind of surreal. But I will say this: Saturday at his memorial service was very. It was very nice. It was very nice. It was very classy, it was done with great dignity, and it was very humorous as well. And I know that Meek is Meek is, was smiling. I know he is, and he was smiling on that day, uh, particularly with everybody that came out to show him some love. And um, then when the service was over, because, you know, I, I got there right before it started. I didn't, you know... I wanted to get there uh, at least 30 minutes before it started, but um, I just had a lot going on. That that Saturday, I had a lot going on. Um, I'd wake up, go get a haircut, and then come back across town, drop kids off my mom's house, and then go all the way to Chesterfield to the service. You know, so it was a lot going on. But what made it special was that after the service, seeing a lot of my old classmates, you know, seeing I'd say about, I'll say between 12 and 15, well, 12 and 15 people. Um, uh, it was it was very special because you, you, you start, you know, you start seeing people. And despite the fact that the occasion was a sad occasion, but when you see these people and we had to really we had to kind of ID ourselves because, you know, the first person that uh, walked up to me. You know, she said, hey, Brandon. And I was like, hey, how you doing? You know, I was like, just um, I said, do me a favor because I wasn't exactly sure who I was talking to. Um, I was standing there with my sister and she pulled her mask down. And it was one of my classmates, Natasha Howard. I'm like, oh, snap. What's up, homie? You know, gave a big hug. All of us was vaccinated. So I'm like, bring it in. Bring it in, niggas. Bring it in. Bring it in. But um, I saw her first and then. You know, I started seeing some familiar shapes, hearing some familiar voices. And then next thing I know, we're in a crowd, we're in a circle, we're talking, we're hugging it out. We're saying how much we miss each other, how much we love each other. I mean, me seeing my um, 
old classmates, uh, my my homeboy, my brother, uh, Brandon George, BG. Me seeing my Doug, who was on the show last week. My um, yeah, my homeboy, my bro Doug. Then seeing some of my homegirls like uh, Chantel Taylor, and we go way back. Like I mean, we go way back. We go back to, like church, small little kids, church. I mean, seeing um, Nikita and Regina, Tanisha and Asante and um, uh, Maldonado and my, my homeboy, Brian Hayes. He's a, he's a, he's a rock star. I mean, that's, that's my guy. I mean, it's a funny, funny guy. Um, it was just like, um, it, it was surreal. It was like, I, I was so happy seeing him was like a breath of fresh air. My homies, uh, Aaron and Andrea Bryant seeing everybody. It was so surreal. Like I said, it just sucked that it had to be for the reason why all of us were gathered there. And it's funny because, you know, there had been talk of were we going to do a reunion again because we've been out for 20 years. We've been out for 20 years this year. And um, so we all started talking as a class, as a family. And, <laughs> um, you know, it was just. You know, there were some who wants to say, hey, well, let's, you know, do an official reunion, get our dough straight. Um, you know, we might have to wait another year. And that's all cool. That's all good. Then there was uh, uh, some of us who were like, you know, we don't have to wait. And, you know, we don't have to have an quote unquote official reunion for us to link up just to just to chill, to hang out, to barbecue, whatever. I mean, because we 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 really don't. You know, I'm down for both. I'm down for I'm down for both because. You know, with one thing that one thing that has definitely taught us, particularly within the last week, is that for one, time isn't forever. And two, uh, time isn't not only is it not forever, it's not guaranteed. We're not guaranteed nothing when it comes to seeing another day. We're not guaranteed that we think we are because, you know, of course, you don't I mean. You don't want to live your life in fear. Oh, my God, I could die tomorrow. No, but it's just, you know, when something like that happens to a person who, in retrospect, in the in the grand scheme of life, was still very young. Um, like I said, we may have came out 20 years ago, but in the grand scheme of life, we're still young. We're not old. We're, we're at an age now where we have to pay attention to our health, but by no means are we old. We're, we're not even in our 40s yet. We're still in our 30s. And, um, you know, it puts things in a perspective of like, hey, you know, we we need we just want to we need to appreciate each other. We have a bond that will never be broken in terms of. Um, my old one Holland Springs classmates. Now, <laughs> my man Doug was was well, he started telling it like it is when it came to us as an actual class. We was lazy as fuck. I mean, <laughs> straight up, we were. I mean, we didn't have a class trip. We never won the Spirit Star. None of that stuff. And you know, when we planned for stuff ten years ago for the ten year reunion, I would say about a third of the people showed up. Now, people have. Thing, you know, once you leave high school and, and go and if, for those who chose to go to college or for those who, you know, just chose to go to the workforce or the military, you know, you life life runs all of us in different directions. So who knows if, if you'll ever find a time where the stars aligned and everybody has and everybody can have the same time off to be able to get together and celebrate just chill and hang out and say what's up who knows if that will ever happen but i will say this to the people who are able to and no no shade to the people that can't because everybody's lives are different but to the people who can who can who are able to come and show your gratitude see some old familiar faces just appreciate life in general and what we all accomplish together, no matter how much it may mean to one person or how little it may mean to the next. If you're able to come out there to show your love, I don't give a damn if it's just 20 of us. Then we can, we can have a ball. We can have a ball. We can get up. We can hang out. We can chill, we can barbecue, meet each other's families or whatever, whatever. Because there's nothing to stop us from doing that. We're all grown-ass adults now. 
There's nothing to stop us from doing this. And when something like this happens, like unfortunately what happened with Meek, like I said last week, you start coming into contact, direct, close contact with your own mortality. And that is something that can hit you like a ton of bricks because you're, you know, we're all sitting here saying, damn, we grew up with him. He's our age. What the F? And I appreciate all I appreciate all the love and concern that was thrown my way, particularly with me being in the hospital a month ago with my stroke. But I'm here. Biatch. I'm here. And I said, ain't nothing taking me away but G-O-D. You know, like my sister was telling me, well, that could have been you. I understand that. But y'all, don't put that on me. Don't put that on me. Understand it. Love everybody for the concern. Doug, that could have been you. Doug said that could have been you. He's right. My sister absolutely right. I don't give me that karma yet. You know, I still I, I got two I got two young kids that I still want to be here for. It could have been me, but it wasn't. It wasn't. I'm lucky. I'm blessed. I'm thankful. And to be able to see all of my peoples like that on Saturday was a blessing in itself, a breath of fresh air. I could have been there all day with them. I literally I took one picture because if I had because I had to I almost was just gonna take pictures of everybody. I would I wouldn't have stopped. Because I could have did that all day. Like I said, we can get together. You know, we can get together whenever we want. It doesn't have to be a, a um a sanction or or official occasion. And a damn sure don't have to be a sad one. We can see each other whenever we want. And being that this is 20 years, you guys, whoever's listening, let's shoot for um September 11th, which uh, this year is going to be a, a, a big day in itself, you know, because that'll be 20 years since that day happened. You know, and... um. I think for us to get together and show love and show unity and, you know, um, show respect to the people who have who we who we grew up with and who walked with us, who are no longer here to show a salute to them, I think would be great. I do. I think would be great. Um, And if you're able if you're able to make it, you know, let's do it. If you're not able to make it, we love you regardless. Because they were, you know, they were a few people who couldn't make the memorial service, you know, for their own personal reasons, whether it was COVID conscious, couldn't get off work, whatever, you know, dealing with personal issues, whatever. We still love you regardless. I love everybody. I love everybody to the end of time. Even if I ain't seen you or spoke to you in the last 20 plus, I still love you. I still got nothing but love for you. I got nothing but love for you, baby. (laughs) <laughs> but I just wanted to get that off my chest because, um, like I said, despite the circumstances, Meek, we miss you. We love you. We'll see you again someday, hopefully not too soon, just being real. Um, but despite the occasion, you know, seeing, seeing the peoples, seeing the old classmates was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was, you know, seeing my boy Brandon George. I hadn't seen him in a minute. I think the last time I saw him, Roman was a baby. You know, love that guy. Chantel Taylor, love her to pieces. When I hugged her, she said, I'm about to cry. I'm like, don't do it because you're going to make me do it too. Don't do it. Don't do it. Seeing Gina, you always going to be my sis. Gina, you always going to be my sis. Um seeing Kita, girl I I can sit back and laugh and joke with her for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and seeing Tanisha I see Tanisha you know it was just you know words can't describe it seeing seeing Asante no matter what you're going through or no matter what anybody's going through you know, if you ever think that when life is not your friend and it happens to everybody, we all go through a time where life is not our friend. I just want everybody here who's listening to know if you ever think that you got nobody or, or you know, whatever, you got me straight up. But anyway, let me go ahead and get to these sports. So uh, 
without further ado, let's get to it. More NFL preseason games. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. The preseason kicked off this past week in the NFL. So I'm going to tell you, I had a lot of football on my TV ever since Thursday, ever since my son's birthday. By the way, happy 10th birthday to my big boy, Roman. And we he celebrated the whole weekend. But, um, yes, more football, more football, more football, more football. Um, I'm going to start by talking about my Denver Broncos. And I never do that. I never start talk, I never start off talking about my Denver Broncos, and I'll tell you why. Because we haven't been worth talking about. I mean, we've not been a winning team since we hoisted the Lombardi Trophy for Super Bowl 50. That was over five years ago. We have had stacked teams, but with one glaring weakness, and that has been the quarterback position. And I point the finger solely at John Elway for that. And I love Elway. You know, I've been a Broncos fan forever. And when I became a Broncos fan, number seven, John Elway was at the helm. And this was before we ever won Super Bowls. Um, But the quarterback position has been a problem. And we had a preseason game against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I'm sitting, I was sitting on the phone talking uh, Saturday, because uh, Saturday, because after the memorial service for Meek, I had, took my kids to Chuck E. Cheese, you know, to kind of kick off, I mean, to kind of, you know, wrap up my son's birthday celebration weekend. So I went to Chuck E. Cheese, and that was while the, Bron- while the Broncos and Vikings game was going on. So I, when, I, when I came back, you know, called Sean and you know we're talking football we're talking the Eagles because we were actually talking about the Eagles during their preseason game against Pittsburgh and yeah the Eagles first string looked pretty good they shouldn't have dropped a couple of passes but Jalen Hurts and all looked good and he's telling me what he believes the Eagles need and you know I'm giving my input and then we start talking about Denver and I've said this since you know I've looked at all of the offseason acquisitions and we are a stacked 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 football team the problem with my denver broncos is simple drew lock okay just like when i first started this show i was on case keenum i never understood that move trying to catch lightning in a bottle twice for a season that case keenum had in 2017 well yes it ain't worked since then but drew lock is the problem and i tried to give drew lock the benefit of the doubt particularly coming into last season But Drew Locke, again, I'll say it again, reminds me of Jay Cutler. And that makes me sick to my motherfucking stomach. Okay? Y'all remember, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but when the Broncos first traded for for Teddy Bridgewater, I was on here acting like we just got Aaron Rodgers. I was acting like we had just got Aaron Rodgers just because all we need is competent quarterback play. Everywhere else on my on my football team, everywhere else on the Broncos is loaded. We are loaded. I like this running back from North Carolina, uh, Javante. I got to remember his last name, but I mean we are loaded at receiver. Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, Cortland Sutton, uh, um, uh, Tim Patrick, tight end Noah Fant. We are loaded. O lines looking good. We're loaded. Lord, are we loaded on defense? <laughs> Please, the no fly zone is back, baby. Okay. Kyle Fuller, did you see what Patrick Sertan did with the pick six on Saturday? Um, Justin Simmons got him locked up to the long-term deal, bringing back Kareem Jackson, Vaughn Miller, Bradley Chubb. We are loaded. But the problem is Drew Locke. And what Sean was saying, well, you got to watch the game. You might not be saying that about Drew Locke. And I watched that game. We we beat the Vikings 33-6, to and we looked good. I think we forced like eight turnovers or something like that. We looked great. But, but, I'm not going to get my nuts in a salad shooter over a preseason game where the Vikings were playing second and third string players the entire night. There was barely anybody, I don't know if there was any, I don't even think there was anybody who was first string for the Minnesota Vikings. So you're telling me, Drew, so like I said, I'm, I'm keeping things in its proper perspective. Yes, Drew Locke looked amazing. He looked amazing Saturday. 
But he looked amazing against the Vikings' backups. And I have to keep that in its proper perspective. Now, the, the Broncos brought in their first stringers on offense. But on offense, because you didn't see a lot of first stringers on defense. I think the only first stringer I can say legitimately that I saw on defense for Denver was uh, Pat Sertan. Because, oh, he's starting. He is starting out the gate. Don't let nobody try to tell you different. Um, but the Broncos had their first string offense out there because you have to because you you have a quarterback competition going on. You're, you're, it's between Drew Locke and between um, Teddy Bridgewater. You have a quarterback competition going on, so you have to see what both quarterbacks are going to look like with the first team offense. Like I said, I have to keep things in its proper perspective. Yes, it was Denver's first team offense out there, but it wasn't Minnesota. It wasn't Minnesota's first string defense. No, it wasn't. And it looked like it. And, and like I said, I'm not trying to take any way, take anything away from Drew Locke. I'm not trying to throw any shade on Drew Locke. You know, he clearly has a big, bigger arm than Teddy Bridgewater. But again, Jay Cutler. He reminds me of Jay Cutler. And who did Jay Cutler remind me of? Jeff George. I may be going back a little back for, far for a few, but Jeff George. And each of those guys, Jeff George and Jay Cutler had one decent season really to speak of one decent season that is it with jeff george it was 99 when he was the backup for the minnesota vikings back coming up uh backing up randall cunningham you had chris carter randy moss and jake reed <laughs> okay and he uh, randall cunningham wasn't getting it done like he did the year before remember the 98 vikings 15 and 1 randall cunningham not so great in 99 jeff george comes in there he has an amazing arm and, you know, you got the fastest receiver in the world in Randy Moss, which was just his second year in the league. So Randy Moss was like 22 years old. Chris Carter, who was still a top 10 wide receiver. Jake Reed, uh, uh, that dude at number three. Jeff George looked great. Got him a big contract to go to the, uh, to the Washington, then known as Washington Redskins. And he stank. <laughs> he stank. Jay Cutler was with my Denver Broncos. 2008, made the Pro Bowl. Finished 8-8, eight eight, no playoffs. Trade him to Chicago. 2010, one good year. Bears go to the uh, NFC Championship game, and he, and he conveniently gets hurt. That's the only time he took the Chicago Bears to the playoffs. I ain't trying to look. For all of that, no. And that's who Drew Locke reminds me of. Get him the, the hell off of my team. Okay, this is why I'm sick of Drew Locke. This is why I'm sick of Vic Fangio. Because, mind you, now just check this, now just, just listen to me on this. Drew Locke starts, he started on Saturday against the Vikings, right? Okay. Teddy Bridgewater is going to start the next preseason game against the Seahawks, which is in turn the dress rehearsal because they've knocked it down to a preseason game. Because I don't pay attention much to preseason because now... I'm not one of these people out here who thinks that preseason should just be done away with. No, because preseason is actually important, especially when you're talking about the pros. Preseason is very important. But you have Teddy Bridgewater starting in the dress rehearsal game against Seattle. You're already setting Drew Locke up for more success. Why? Because, again, he started Saturday against the Vikings second and third string defense. Okay, now Teddy Bridgewater came in against that same second and third string defense. Yes. But Teddy Bridgewater's going to have to start against that first string Seattle defense. And Drew Locke is going to come in against that second and third string Seahawks defense. Do you get what I'm saying here? Drew Locke is probably going to look better than Bridgewater because he's going to be playing a weaker defense. And that in turn is going to make Drew Locke look like he's the better quarterback. He ain't. I'm telling you, with the roster that my Broncos have we don't need Drew Locke as our starting quarterback because he's too inconsistent. We need somebody who can make plays with his arms and his legs and is, will take care of the football. Honestly, now I know I was, you know, lobbing for, yes, bring Aaron Rodgers to Denver. I never really thought that would happen. It would have been nice. But look, this, this is who we got. This is who we riding with. And I'm sorry, Drew Locke, mm-mm. Nope, 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 nope. So that's why I said I can't put, but I can't really put any stock in on a game where the other team, aka the Minnesota Vikings, ain't playing nobody, nobody of note. Pat, no Patrick Peterson, no nobody. 
Yeah, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Now, my defense, we didn't play nobody. We didn't we didn't play nobody on the defensive end, but the attention is paid to the for Denver this season is on the quarterback contest. And I want to see I want to see Teddy B, baby. I want to see Teddy B. Drew Locke, you had your shot. I'm not trying to be funny. Maybe you might do somewhere, do better somewhere else, but you had your shot, homie, because like I, as soon as I started getting that Jay Cutler vibe about Drew Lock, I damn near threw up. I'm serious. I am dead serious. Nah. We can be a playoff team with Bridgewater at quarterback. Quote me on that. Now, as far as the rest of the preseason goes, <laughs> you got a chance to see a lot of the young uh, up-and-coming quarterbacks from this season's draft and last season's draft, like Trevor Lawrence, uh, Trevor Lawrence, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Zach Wilson. You got a chance to see those guys. Jordan Love as well from the Green Bay Packers. And he actually ended up getting a little banged up. I don't think that he's uh, going to play the next preseason game. His preseason may be, uh, in fact, over. But you got a chance to see some of those guys. You got a second-year quarterback, Jalen Hurts, Tua. You know, you got a chance to look at these guys to see exactly what you are and what indeed you're dealing with here. And I'm going to tell you, the two quarterbacks that I was impressed the most with the two young quarterbacks that I was impressed the most with was Trey Lance and Justin Fields. They look, I mean, it's it would not surprise me if Justin Fields, I mean, I think that the Bears are going to try to be loyal to um, Andy Dalton. I think they're going to try to be loyal to Andy Dalton, at least for the start of the season. But I, honestly, unless the Bears get off to a, a, a three and one or two and two start, that job is going to be Justin Fields before we hit the midseason point. I just, I just believe that. I believe that because I think that this NFC North, while is seen as a, you know, a cakewalk for the Packers, I don't know, and I only say that because I don't believe in players not playing at all in preseason. Doesn't always work for everybody. Doesn't always work for everybody. And I think that Aaron Rodgers not playing at all in the preseason, I think that could be a mistake. And I'm not saying that just I'm not saying that because I don't think he has any cohesiveness with his teammates. It's pretty much everybody back. I mean, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, uh, Tanyan, uh, Valdez, Scantlin, uh, Lazard. I, I don't think that's going to be an issue. I just think, you know, physical conditioning. I would like to see him play one preseason game. So... I understand you're like, who's really going to test the Green Bay Packers? I mean, I think Minnesota could give it a shot. I mean, they, I mean, look, I've been saying this about Kirk Cousins for the last three years. He better because all his money is guaranteed. He has, he has the best agent in the NFL because Kirk Cousins is nearing $200 million in contract money that's been fully guaranteed. But I don't agree with people not playing at all in the preseason. Like, what's going on with Dak Prescott and him getting another MRI and – He's probably not going to play in the preseason. I think that's a big mistake. Now, if he's physically literally unable to, I get it. Okay, fine. But if he's able to play any type of preseason snaps, I think he should do it. it just is a, I think that would be a big mistake. I think it would be a big mistake on, on his part, on Aaron Rodgers' part. And like I said, these new quarterbacks, like I said, to me, Trey Lance and Justin Fields wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised if Justin Fields is the starter by week five or week six for the Chicago Bears. Trey Lance looked good. Now, he hasn't played football uh, for real, meaningful football in damn near two years. So he had some good, sharp moments, but he also there were times where he looked a little sloppy. So I think it would be better suited if Trey Lance, you know, did the whole Patrick Mahomes, Alex Smith thing. If he sat for a year or maybe well, Shanahan has already said that he's going to have a package of plays for him kind of like Lamar Jackson before he eventually took over for Joe Flacco. Um, but I think Garoppolo, if he stays healthy, and that's such the big question mark because that's been the knock on him for his entire career is that he ain't durable. But the one year he was durable, you ended up in the Super Bowl and you should have won it. So 
um, I think I see Dustin Justin Fields is definitely uh, coming in to start before Trey Lance. Now, Zach Wilson, he'll be the day one starter, but I'm sorry, Zach Wilson doesn't impress me at all. I think the Jets made a dumb pick, and I think it was um, to Justin Fields' benefit because I always thought that if the Jets didn't get the number one pick and they weren't going to take Trevor Lawrence, I always thought they should have took Justin Fields. This notion of um, – of of Zach Zach Wilson, that all of a sudden when Justin Fields ain't playing and it's not you know because of anything he did, it's just how the schedule looked. How, how all of a sudden Zach Wilson just jumps Justin Fields in the draft and jumped him significantly. And I'm like, what? I'm like, New York Jets doing New York Jets things, and I think Zach Wilson is they're gonna they, it's gonna I think it's gonna show that. Drafting Zach Wilson instead of Justin Fields was a mistake. And I, like I said, to the benefit of, of Justin Fields because he actually does have two veterans there that he can learn something from. Andy Dalton and Nick Foles. So I think that is definitely that definitely will be to his benefit. Now, again, um, Mac Jones. <sighs> yeah, Mac Jones. Mac Jones. <sighs> oh, boy. I don't have anything bad to say about Mac Jones. I think uh, I don't think Mac Jones' arm is as strong on a pro level as it will have proven to be on a college level. But what the Patriots coaching staff has shown is that, you know, if you can just get competent quarterback play, they're so well coached in every asset of the game, you can mess around and win 11, 12 games with a person like Mac Jones or, or Cam Newton. Because I think Cam is going to be the day one starter. But I think Cam, I don't think Cam's leash is going to be very long. I don't think it's going to be very long. Because because Mac Jones is so much more of an accurate passer than him. He is, but, but, but Cam, Cam now is even at 32 years old and 10 years in the league is still so much more the better athlete than Mac Jones. So I think the Patriots will have the same results. Um, particularly, it, it, you know, with either quarterback. I mean, I think if Cam stays healthy, I think he should be able to keep that job. But again, I don't think the leash will be long because of the accuracy of passing that Mac Jones brings to the table. I don't think he has a sh- right right now. I don't think he has a strong arm as it looked like on the college tapes. But he is accurate. He is he is dead eye accurate. So that's you know that's. That's, you know, that's a little crazy. Now, Jalen Hurts, I don't know why the Philadelphia Eagles just don't go and say that Jalen Hurts is the starting quarterback. I don't know. I don't know what the hell is wrong with the Eagles upper management. Like, I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. Like you see. And I don't think Jalen Hurts has the Joe um, has the um Carson Wentz syndrome of he just doesn't want to have any type of competition. But um you need to see, I mean, if you're Howie Roseman, I mean, damn, you drafted him in the second round. Excellent. You name him your starter and see what you got. I actually think the Eagles are going to be way better than people actually think. People a lot of people think that the Eagles are going to be pathetic. Now, I'm not impressed by Nick Seriani at all. Those two press conferences, his first two press conferences, gave me duh, duh, idiot vibes. <laughs> but, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I think because of Jalen Hurts' intangibles, I think the Eagles will be better. I think they'll be better than what people think. Look out. And as look, the NFC East is horrible. Everybody is a live player. I've been on here. I've been on record. I was telling Sean, I still believe that the Giants are going to win that division. I know what's been going on with the Giants at training camp. Three players retiring and shit. I think the Giants are another loaded football team, um, but I'm not counting the Eagles out. No, 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 absolutely not. Nope, won't do it. I think now, now as far as Tua goes with Miami, I think they need to go ahead and take the training wheels off and let Tua do, do what he do because Miami got weapons. Quiet as is kept. You got, um, you know, you still got Devontae Parker, Mike Gusecki. 
you picked up Will Fuller in free agency. Now keeping him healthy is a is 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 a task in itself too, because he got a little injury history too. But then you drafted Jalen Waddle, who is familiar with Tua because they played together at Alabama. Miami has some weapons. They need to take them training wheels off of Tua and let him do what he do. For real. Because I think the Dolphins are going to be very, very good this year. I don't, I don't, I'm not giving this division lock, stock, and barrel to Buffalo. Mm-mm. No. Because I think the Dolphins are going to be better. And the Dolphins were a 10-win team last year. I think the Dolphins are going to be better. I think the Patriots are going to be better. So I'm not going to just – I can't just hand it to – yeah, no, no, no question. Buffalo, it may look like it on paper. You know, Josh, um, Josh Allen just got – just got his money, got his extension over two hundred million dollars. But again, um, Miami and New England have been able to stockpile around their quarterback because all of their quarterbacks are still. Well, you have Cam, who's taking pretty much a, a who's not going to be worth much because he's still trying to prove that he's a starter. But then with um, Miami, with Tua, with Tua, he's still on a rookie deal. And for that, and Matt, Mac Jones, New England rookie deal, so you can build around. So they're in a very advantageous position right now. And then Buffalo, Buffalo, you know, that's great. I'm happy for Josh, uh, for, for Josh Allen, but you better show it. You better show it. You better prove it, bro. Tell you that right now. You, I'm telling you that right now. So, I mean, those were the things that I took away the most from this first week of preseason because a lot again most teams did not play their ones you know so it is is what it is now and i will say this another player and i've kind of been chuckling making jokes about him another player another quarterback who actually has looked pretty good this preseason is dwayne haskins uh formerly of washington drafted number 15 by washington in 2019 and for you know, he had the maturity issues, you know, not being responsible, which led to him being cut last season in Washington. I think he's gone to a great place, and I think he should be the heir apparent to Ben Roethlisberger if he keeps trending upwards because he looked good. He looked like he had total command of the offense when he was in there. He looked good because I'm sorry, Pittsburgh needs to be over this whole Mason Rudolph thing. Sorry, Mason Rudolph ain't your future, okay? If you're a Steelers fan, you should be done with Mason Rudolph because he had his shot. He had a chance when Ben got hurt in 2019. And what you've seen thus far in the preseason, what have you seen to make you to, to, to make you say, hey, this guy's improved over the last two years? I ain't seen it, but I have seen it with Haskins. And I think he's a, be in a very good situation should he be the heir apparent to Ben Roethlisberger. Huh, so that's my uh, that's how I feel about football. Now, nothing much to report on basketball other than this trade that was made by the Clippers, them trading Patrick Beverly, Rondo, and a third player to um, to Memphis for Eric Bledsoe. Eh, it doesn't move me. I'm not gonna sit here and say the Clippers got better or worse. Well, I'm not certainly not gonna sit here and say that they've gotten better. But, I mean, I guess you can say they got a little more youthful, I guess. Because Eric Bledsoe is 31. Pat Bev just turned 33 in February. Rondo will be 36. Um, I guess. I mean, Eric Bledsoe is a better offensive threat than either player. Um, while we know Pat Beverly for being a, a great defensive player, at least an irritant on defense. Eric Bledsoe has made a couple of all NBA defensive teams. Um, my, my only issue is that when it comes to the playoffs, Eric Bledsoe just disappears. He he just, you can't find him in the playoffs. I mean, that's why Milwaukee traded him to the Pelicans for Drew Holiday. And then right after that, you win a championship. I mean, that's, I don't know. I don't know because, like I said, I can't say the I can't say the Clippers got better, but I can't say the Clippers got worse because you know it doesn't surprise I mean, it doesn't surprise me at least with Rondo because I always while well, I thought Rondo was a good pickup for them last season, 
I always said, and I've been consistent on this, when they got Reggie Jackson, I always thought that the Clippers had a point guard. I never know when everybody would say, well, the Clippers need a point guard. I've been on this show saying, but the Clippers have a point guard. Reggie Jackson is is more than capable. And then he started balling out during the playoffs. So he re-signs a two-year deal. Um two-year deal 22 million making 11 million a year i mean nobody may you know nobody in nba circles may be like wow but he was on the veterans minimum last year so you know that is a significant pay raise so i mean i don't know i don't know if bledsoe is going to be a starter i don't know because really to me if if Kawhi is not going to be playing then the clippers aren't a title contender they'll make the playoffs you know, on the strength of Paul George and Reggie Jackson and Serge Ibaka, and I guess now you throw now you throw Eric Bledsoe in that mix along with uh, Terrence Mann. I think the Clippers have a good enough roster where they'll make the playoffs. But unless Kawhi is there, you know, I can't say championship. I can't say championship because given how everything played out this past season. You could easily make a case saying that, well, damn, if Kawhi didn't get hurt, the Clippers probably would have won the whole thing. Because I think they would have beaten Phoenix. I think they would have beaten Milwaukee. You know, have, if you have a healthy Kawhi, I just do. But it is what it is. Um, you know, and I, I'm not taking anything away from the Bucks. They're the reigning defending champions, and damn it, they deserve it. I loved seeing it. Um, but really, that yeah, that's the only thing that I have to say in regards to basketball, uh, because that's really the only thing that's happened. I mean, football, the beginning of preseason, you know that's going to take all of the headlines. You know, baseball is past the midseason point. They just had that Field of, Dream, Field of Dreams game between the Yankees and the White Sox. Yeah, fuck that game. <laughs> Field of Dreams, my ass, Okay. If you're a Yankee fan, which I am, that was a field of nightmares. Not no damn dreams. It was great until the end result. Even though Yankees been on fire lately. Yankees been on fire lately. I don't know what's going on. But Yankees, I mean, if the if they would be in one of those play-in wild card scenarios, you know, whatever. The Yankees, to me, have still underachieved, but... You know, if you get him in a playoff setting, anything can happen. But I'm going to turn my attention to the events that are going to happen this Saturday coming up in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am, of course, talking about the sweet science. Now, it was supposed to be a big time welterweight championship fight on Saturday, August the 21st between Errol Spence and Manny Pacquiao. But unfortunately, last week, um, there's a Errol Spence suffers a tear in his retina. And of course, you can't fight if you can't see. That actually sounds kind of serious. I'd be a little concerned about Errol Spence going forward. And he's had to deal with some stuff over the last couple of years. You know, so I hopefully I hopefully he has a, a full recovery. But damn it, man. Damn it. So they didn't just simply call off the fight card. They put in you uh your Dennis Ugis. He'll step in on you know less than two weeks notice to fight Pacquiao for his for, for Ugis' WBA super welter well super welterweight title. Blah 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 yakety shit. Okay, I mean, because while I'm glad there's still going to be, I'm glad that Pacquiao is still stepping back in the ring, I wanted to see him face Errol Spence. Even though, I'm not going to lie, I've said that I was worried about Manny Pacquiao because Errol Spence is a big welterweight, and I didn't want to see Manny beat up. But I wanted to see Manny fight him. I did. I mean, I really did. And, you know, the fight was supposed to be in, in Dallas. I don't even know where the fight's going to be at. I don't know if it's still going to be in Dallas, or I don't know if they've totally moved the event. You know, Dallas is Errol Spence's hometown, and Manny has fought in uh, the Cowboy Stadium uh, quite a few times. I remember he fought Joshua Clotty, fought Antonio Margarito, and came pretty close to selling out the entire stadium. But, I mean, this, this was supposed to be a fantastic summer 
for boxing and that just has not been the case unfortunately like at the beginning of june they had of course you know the mayweather logan paul exhibition you know i was a sucker and paid for it you know whatever but then it was supposed to be tyson fury and deontay wilder followed by pacquiao and errol spence of course now um tyson fury and his camp they catch covid that fight has to be postponed to october errol spence tears his fucking retina and now he can't fight manny pacquiao goodness gracious and then on top of that um canelo and caleb plant were supposed to fight in september now they're no no uh, negotiations to fight in november and i ain't heard nothing about mike tyson fighting again ah i'm a little frustrated right now now like I said, I'm happy that there will still be a fight card on Saturday. But um, let me tell you what, you know, what what the cable company, what the, the, the people who make the prices for the fight, um, I think they need to bring that down. They need to bring this down about $25, $25 30 Yeah, yeah. Because I think the fight itself was 80 bucks originally. Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao. Okay, cool. But Ugas versus Pacquiao, that ain't what we want. Look, un that's unfortunately what we're going to see. That ain't what we want to see. They need to bring that down to $50. They need to charge $50 for that. Because Ugas ain't Spence. Okay, Spence is top three pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world going up against a legend. I've seen Ugas fight before. He's respectable. I get it. Yada, yada, yada shit. I mean... And y'all know I am a huge boxing fan. Now, this could throw Pacquiao a serious loop because you have a fighter coming in on two weeks' notice. And like I said, I think they, you know, they weighed their options and they, you know, they didn't want to totally throw away the card because once again, you already had to do that in July with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Definite, definite, definite bad look on boxing. If you have to do that a couple weeks in a row. And then, of course, I know the next week, again on a Sunday, you got Jake Paul and Tyron Woodley fighting. I'm not going to order that. I promise you. I did with Floyd because it's Floyd. I'm not going to order Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. I'm, ju I'm, ju I'm just simply not. Not going to waste my money. Not going to waste my money. You know, um, September 11th, Oscar De La Hoya is making his ring return. And this ain't no exhibition fight. This is a real fight. It's a 10-rounder, light heavyweights. And um, Anthony Joshua fights September 25th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's good. I, don't get me wrong. That's good. You know, I just, at the beginning of June, I was, I was hyped for boxing. I, even though I know, you know, I would have been paying $300 a month cable bills. Look, that's just me. That's the, but, I mean, that hasn't happened, so I guess that's a good thing. I'm still going to watch the Pacquiao fight because I haven't seen Manny fight in two years. He hasn't fought in two years, um, which is why he got stripped of his WBA title because of inactivity. But, I mean, last year, I mean, come on. I mean, they should make an accept. Like, last year was the COVID shit. I mean, come on, man. Like, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder fought their second fight right before the pandemic. Neither one of them has fought since gonna be damn near two years when they get back in the ring nobody stripped tyson fury of his belt so i mean i think they could have you know i don't think they should have done that you know to manny pacquiao that's just me that's just my opinion so hopefully it will be a good fight um of course i'm rooting for manny and um 42 years old though but i mean we're at an age now where hey 40, the 40 year old athlete is still still doing it still doing it look at um what's his name anderson silva who got uh, who fought julio cesar chavez jr a month ago and beat him i mean julio cesar chavez jr should be ashamed of himself <laughs> i'm serious he should anderson silva who had only had one, a couple of professional boxing fights which was a very very long time ago before he went on to become a ufc legend actually gets in a sanctioned fight and beats you you should be ashamed of yourself on the same night where his daddy fought his julio senior fought in a you know one of those special exhibitions i ain't knocking it i'm here for it but i'm like golly and now anderson silva is um 
Anderson Silva is gonna fight again. Anderson Silva, who the hell was Anderson Silva talking about fighting? Ah, it, it was it was actually somebody credible. I, I can't think of it now. I do I do apologize, you know, to those who <laughs> to those who actually give a damn. But I will say this: one fight that does intrigue me that's on the undercard of this Pacquiao fight is Victor Ortiz versus um, Robert Guerrero. Both of them have fought Floyd Mayweather in the past. And that's actually, I actually find that to be very interesting. Interesting. So I will definitely pay attention to that. Definitely. And this Tito Ortiz, that's who the guy who Anderson Silva was talking about boxing in a real fight. But now they, they, they're having beef because of, um, I guess, uh, catch weight. Anderson Silva wants it to be 195 pounds, I think. I don't think Tito Ortiz does. He said that he has no respect now for Anderson Silva. Whatever, because I know Tito Ortiz was trying to throw his 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 name in the Mike Tyson hat. Um, but whatever. Anyway, but um, with that with that being said, what a buzzer! What a buzzer! What a buzzer! Oh man, yeah. Last week was quite the week between the um, the unfortunate tragedy that happened. Um, within the, my school circle, but then right on top of that, having to rebound because the same that's the same week as my son's birthday and making sure that he had a great birthday and then going school clothes shopping. It's almost that time. And then on top of that, you know, Chuck E. Cheese, everything else is, it. you know, it's, it's it, like I said, last week was, was quite a week. It was quite a week. Um, for good and for for sadness, but um, I'm grateful, I'm blessed, and again, I definitely, despite the circumstances, enjoyed seeing uh, my people. And once again, I have en- have enjoyed sitting on here and being able to talk sports and. Just let my hair down. A little bit I got left. <laughs> uh, let my hair down and just, you know, have fun. And it is so important to just enjoy life. Enjoy life. No matter what, you know. And that's one of the good things I take from from Meek is that, of course, we're human beings He's definitely gone way too soon. But the Heavenly Father upstairs, he thought otherwise. He, he said, it's time to come home, meet. So, but one thing I, one thing that I take away from, from, from this experience involving Meek is that he enjoyed his life, every bit of it. And, and he was the ultimate foodie. You know, Meek versus food. I didn't seen it. Um... And he did what he wanted to do. And at the end of the day, that's all that's that's all all of us actually want in life is to be able to do what the hell we want to do. He did. So there's no shame in that. There's no shame in that. But again, we definitely need to enjoy life, enjoy each other. Just stop stressing about the just the nonsense. Because we we will be told somehow, some way, how unimportant, even if it's not directly, we will be shown how unimportant a lot of the dumb stuff really is in the grand scheme of life. So, it's your boy, Brandon Bravon Towns. This has been another episode of Sports Plus Life. If you haven't hit that subscription button, definitely hit that subscription button and join the Sports Plus Life family. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, definitely leave a comment on the box below. Hit that like button, too, if you don't mind. Uh, Cool. (laughs) But again, it's your boy Brandon Brave on Towns. I'm out this bitch. Hey, man. All jokes aside, I love you guys. I'll see y'all later. Peace.